Some people have tons of energy when they wake up in the morning. Spring out of bed, go wake up the roosters, chop some wood, take a five mile run, and have a cup of coffee before I ever even get out of bed. And whether you think you're a morning person or not, your body is. Today, we're talking about the dawn phenomena and how it affects diabetics just like you. Welcome back to the Type Me channel. I'm Ben and today we're covering tips, tools, and reviews for the Pancreatic Leak Challenge, specifically the Dawn Phenomenon. So what is the Dawn Phenomenon and how does it work? First of all, I think it's important to note that the phenomenon isn't necessarily just for diabetics. This actually affects all human beings. It's a natural event that your body undertakes every morning just before you wake up. Unfortunately for diabetics like you and me, this path may lead to frustration. Well, let's talk about morning. Morning isn't necessarily the time on your Hello Kitty digital clock. Morning is the time that you wake up regardless of who you are or where you are. Now your body works off of a different clock called the circadian rhythm. Now what the circadian rhythm is, is a clock that works in the background of your mind. And the dawn phenomenon works off of this biological clock. Your body will prepare itself every single day to wake up around the same time, which is extremely difficult for people who work at night or shift work. Their body is constantly trying to adjust to our circadian rhythm that it's not used to. When you look up dawn phenomenon, you're gonna find tons of websites, and most of them actually give you a time of day when this occurs, 4 a.m. to 10 a.m., which makes sense if that's the time you wake up every single day. But for today's conversation, we're gonna base it off of your circadian rhythm. Now let's go over a little bit of pathophysiology. So when your body prepares to wake itself up every single day, cortisol is looking for energy sources and it goes throughout your body and it finds two main sources. Those sources are A, sugar, and B, protein. Now sugar energy is accomplished through a process called gluconeogenesis, which is basically the creation of new glucose, which is essentially the conversion of substrates into glucose. And then secondly, it begins a process of metabolizing proteins. And unfortunately for us, the result of this process is hyperglycemia and increased insulin resistance. So your body is trying its hardest to give you energy before you wake up. Now for some diabetics, they're gonna experience a jump in glucose levels before their toes even touch the ground. And others like me, when the boots hit the floor and you start going, that's when you'll see the jump. So how do we combat this? I've talked to a lot of different folks over social media and they've given me a lot of really good ideas. One of those involves trying to trick your body and telling it that it's not time to wake up. Others are the type of food you put into your mouth right after you wake up. Others like me have tried giving small doses of fast insulin in order to combat the sudden rise in hyperglycemia. Some people exercise. Some people put food in their mouth right away in order to send a signal to the liver, hey, you don't have to create glucose. So what I did is I went and I tried some of these tactics to see if this will actually work for me. I work at a fire station and we have a treadmill there. So when I wake up, the first thing I do is I give myself my dose of slow insulin and then I go for a walk and I'll walk anywhere from one to two miles. The idea is try to get that insulin circulating in my system a little bit faster than it normally does. On top of that, I took the advice of eating and I grabbed a handful of mixed nuts, threw that in my mouth. Previously, I would see a pretty good rise in my glucose. It would go anywhere from 100 resting before I went to sleep to 200 to 250, depending on what I had for breakfast, and then dip back down. And hopefully I could get that number down before 10 o'clock so that I had a two hour gap before lunch when I knew it would go up again and then I'd have to dose. And I tried a lot of different things in order to get that slope in the morning to decrease. And what I found to work the best was adjusting my long acting insulin. Here's how it worked for me. On a daily basis, I used to take one large dose of long acting insulin and I would take it in the morning. And what I hoped I would accomplish is that I'd have a good amount of insulin in my body over a 24 hour period. But what I realized is is that long acting insulin isn't meant to last 24 hours. The insulin that I'm on, it could take anywhere from one to two hours to actually kick in. And it'll last up to eight hours. Now what I mean by that is it hits the top of the slope at eight hours and then begins to slope down. Now when your body gives you insulin, it doesn't just dump a good amount of insulin for the entire day. And so I thought maybe it's a bad idea that I'm trying to do what my body doesn't naturally want to do. Why don't I give myself small increments, but 
not go crazy with it. So at first I split it into two doses, one in the morning, one in the night. And I still saw the dawn phenomenon happening and I wasn't really happy with it. Luckily somebody suggested to me trying dosing three times a day. Now that sounds crazy, but I thought, heck, I'm making a video, I might as well try it. And wouldn't you know, it worked. So here was my idea. At first I wanted to take three doses and split them into even amount of hours. The first time I tried that, I realized that it's still not lasting as long as I want it to last. But what I found worked best is if I slightly overlapped the end of the previous dose. And let me explain. So I thought, this medicine is only supposed to last eight hours. I'll separate the three doses into eight hour increments. Every eight hours, I'll take another dose. You could see that that rise, even though it's still there, is significantly lower, which means a better outcome for me in the long term. So recently I started eating better and exercising, and this in turn will change my regimen again. And the less calories and carbohydrates I take in, the less I need it. So this is gonna be a work in progress. I'm constantly gonna have to adjust it. Well, let's do a quick recap. The dawn phenomenon is something that happens to everyone, not just diabetics. It is the natural path that your body takes to give you energy throughout the entire day. Something that starts in the liver and ends up in your blood. But we don't have to be a victim of it. Take the advice from your friends, work with your doctor so that it doesn't have to dictate your day any longer. Something I said today affects someone you know please share this video with them. If you're a diabetic and something I said today affects someone you love, please leave some comments below and subscribe to these videos. I'd love to hear about your experience with the Dawn Phenomenon. As a diabetic, do you experience it every single day? Is this something that you've conquered? Please let me know your thoughts and let me know your advice. And remember, we're the authors, editors, and consumers of our story. Write a story worth living, adjust as needed, and invest in your success. I'm Ben, I'm Type Me, and I'll see you next time.